On April 22, 1968, David Bowie left the DRAM label, a subsidiary of Decca Records, where his recording career had got off to an undistinguished start. That year, the Beatles returned from India and announced the formation of Apple Records, a new label for creatives. Bowie immediately instructed his then-manager, Kenneth Pitt, to submit an audition tape. When the decision finally came, it was not good news. The Beatles' new company, Apple Records, rejected David Bowie's attempt to gain a recording contract. Apple did sign James Taylor and Badfinger. Nicholas Peck says in his authoritative book, The Complete David, the Apple office was completely swamped with tapes and that most of the artists signed were people either the Beatles liked themselves or the close staff around the Beatles. James Taylor came through Paul's brother-in-law, Badfinger came through Maul Evans, Billy Preston through George Harrison and because he worked with and knew the Beatles for years. When you look at the releases by Apple, Almost every artist had a connection with the Beatles, be it past or present. The story was also revealed in Ken Pitt's book, David Bowie, The Pitt Report. Ken said, I lost no time in trying to find another recording contract for David. His official release from Decca was dated April 22nd, and at 6.30 in the afternoon of the 23rd, I was in the office of Terry Doran, who ran Apple Music Limited for the Beatles. I had recently met Terry, who had come down from Liverpool with Brian Epstein, and I wanted to sound him out about the possibility of David recording for the Apple label. Terry, whose main responsibility was for the Apple publishing division, was naturally disappointed that the publishing rights to David's work would not be available for two years, but nevertheless he offered to speak to people at Apple Records. On the 24th, Terry sent the following memo to Derek Taylor. Please find enclosed album and information on David Bowie, whose management has approached us with a view on being on the Apple label. Are you interested? Had David not been keen on recording for Apple, I would not have tolerated the deplorable organization, sheer amateurism and downright rudeness that confronted us during the next three months, the time it took Apple to give us a decision. The situation did not improve when Peter Asher was given the job of head of A&R. I had not seen Peter since 1964, when with Gordon Waller he was enjoying some success as the pop duo Peter and Gordon, and had joined the Manfred Mann American tour. It now seemed to me that his only qualification for joining Apple was that his sister was the actress Jane Asher, girlfriend of Paul McCartney. It took me some considerable time to make contact with him, but when I did, he told me that the label was not interested in David. I asked him if he would let me have a letter to that effect, and on July 15th he wrote. As we told you on the phone, Apple Records is not interested in signing David Bowie. The reason is that we don't feel he is what we are looking for at the moment. Thank you for your time. Peter Asher couldn't spare any of his own time to personally sign the Tears letter, his name being inscribed by a secretary whose initials were CO. Quickly after he was rejected by the Apple Corps, Bowie signed for Philips Records and released his first number one single, Space Oddity, the following year. When he had found success in the 70s, he became fast friends with John Lennon and they collaborated on his Young Americans album. Bowie even recorded a cover of George Harrison's Try Some, Buy Some, but the admiration apparently wasn't mutual. In a WTF with Mark Maron podcast, Eric Idle, who was friends with both Harrison and Bowie, talked about how he tried to get George to meet Bowie. George responded by pronouncing Bowie's name in a sarcastic way, Bowie, and said he wasn't interested. David Bowie took over from where the Beatles left off, but in his own unique style. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ringo, folks. <laughs> well, what can I say? And goodbye you to know. all of them. <laughs> well, this is Ringo. Everyone seems to have said everything here, so I'll just sign off by saying cheerio and best of luck from the Beatles.